at Madison. You're t you just turned 25 years old. The beginning of this month. Congratulations, happy birthday! I'm finally legal to be a congressman. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah, you pulled off a stunning upset in the uh, a very loaded uh, and talented field in the Republican primary in North Carolina's 11th congressional district, formerly held by Mark Meadows. Um, so congratulations on that big victory. Thank you. Yeah, it was a very loaded field, and the, the opponents we were going up against in the Republican primary were just such exceptional people. It was an honor to be among them and everything, but you know what? Uh, we were kind of a dark horse in the race. We came through, and our message, just kind of what I was just talking to you about, of us all coming together, and that we all, like, the message of conservatism, what I believe is a belief in freedom. It's a belief in letting people have the pen of destiny in their own hands and having a small conservative government that gets out of our lives. Because, you know, when we start getting government involved in things, it creates everything to become so partisan. We just want to become each other's enemies. And I, I really believe that our message of, hey, we're all Americans first. We're going to make our country the best it can be. We're going to get government out of your life, and we're going to let you live on your own terms. And focusing on dining room politics, not incremental GDP growth at the end of the year. Right. It's things that actually affect, you know, the small family right down the road. So, Madison, uh, we mentioned if you're elected in November, uh, you'll be the youngest – serving member of Congress in over 200 years. And I believe that the, do you know who the youngest member of Congress ever was? I do. And he's actually a cheater and I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't like him. Uh, but he, his father unfortunately passed away while he was serving, his father was serving a term in Congress. And then uh, they appointed, the, the party that was in his state appointed him to go and take his father's place, which I imagine was such a great honor. But because of the special circumstances, he got to go be a congressman at 22 years old when the Constitution clearly states you have to be 25. So I think we should just push him to the side, and I'll be the youngest. So I think that's William Charles Cole Claiborne of Tennessee. That is indeed. And uh, 1797 he was elected, I think. So um, anyway, Madison, um, so you, you just barely meet the minimum age requirement. You'll be the youngest serving member of Congress if you're elected in November. Some might say you're too young and you don't have enough experience. Uh, maybe you should wait until you get a little more life experience to serve in Congress. What would be your answer to that? Well, one, I agree. I would love to have more life experience. And oftentimes when we started running in this primary, people said, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're great. You have the right ideas. You've got the great passion. You're exactly what we want. But, you know, you should wait in line. You should, should wait. And I, I would oftentimes shake my head and and exclaim, who are we in line behind? Who are we waiting on to step up? Because when I look at our country right now, the leaders that are in Congress right now are leading us down a dark hole. They're trying to enrich themselves and their friends, and they're not focused on being someone who is accountable to the people. They want to be accountable to their, these super PACs that prop them up. Whereas I want to be a congressman that represents my neighbors, that represents blue-collar workers. I, don't, I think we have this new American oligarchy, and it is the career politician. And I, I, that's the big reasons I advocate for term limits. And, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, we already have term limits built into the Constitution, and that's an election. Right. But I think that the average person who says that may not understand how much power actually comes from the incumbency, especially in this age of, of mass media where you can get so much name ID and you can get so much talking across. It is very difficult to unseat a sitting member of Congress, and I think that's why we – you know, Nan, I'll just pick on the other side. Nancy Pelosi has been in Congress for longer than I've been alive. Yeah. And I, I think we have the problem on both sides where we get these career politicians who they just – they don't actually want to solve problems. They just want to complain about them. And I think we need to start getting some new blood into Congress. And that doesn't mean younger people. That just means I think we need to have more people from all walks of life so we can come at this with a group collective idea and really be able to attack these ideas head on with new ideas. Yeah, for sure.